All right, now that you've seen the unit assembled and you get an idea of what's going on, uh, let me show you how I made this. Uh, don't be intimidated. There are really only a couple of holes which you need to be relatively accurate on. Um, and that's the holes here which are used to mount the servos to. This servo, and if you um, and many of these size, the spacing between the holes is 10 millimeters. So all that you need to do is take a ruler and, and mark off 10 millimeters or one centimeter and drill your holes. It doesn't have to be super precise. That will allow you to space the holes appropriately so that you can attach the servos to your piece of aluminum. The spacing between the two servos which is the center point here to the center point here, is 1.5 inches. So once again, you can just take your ruler out and mark that off, and that will show you the proper distance between there. Alternatively, if you're not keen on uh, worrying about the precision there or tapping these holes, um, I th I, you can absolutely simply set the servo on the, the proper space, and you can glue it on. If you're going to do that, I would recommend using JB Weld. It's uh, only a couple of bucks, I think maybe three or four dollars. Also available at any hardware store. Um, it's easy to use and it's very strong. And, I, and that would be an alternative if you don't want to worry about tapping those holes, drill or, drilling and tapping those holes. And so if you do glue that, the only holes that you need to tap are the side holes here. I'll show you those in a second. And two top holes. I drilled a couple extra here uh, when I was experimenting. The side holes are used to mount this bracket in here, and as you saw, uh, what the bracket did was uh, rest up against the ridge of the unit, and when I combined that with the two set screws, that allowed the unit to be pinched into place. Likewise, if you'd rather not tap these side holes, you can glue these parts on here as well. You will need to, to drill and tap two holes here for the set screws, but there's no precise uh, alignment needed. It will help if you have them roughly in the center so that your piece doesn't tilt, but um, regardless, you just need to have them over here on each side. All right, let's assemble our unit. Take the first servo. So after I finished this uh, a couple of days ago, I took it to, or I called a, quite a few friends and took it over to about a dozen of different apartments and uh, gave it a whirl. And sure enough, it actually fit every single unit I tried it on. However, that's not to say there aren't, won't be some which have different dimensions. Um, and if so, you may just need to adjust the distance between the servos a little, or more likely, you might need to change um, the height of these little pegs, which I'm using to pinch the uh, piece in place. Like I said, mine are one inch high, um, but if you need to have them shorter or longer, just do so. Once again, this is just aluminum I bought from a hardware store, and I just used a hacksaw to cut it. If you'd like to use wood or plastic or something else, uh, by all means, feel free to get creative. The idea here isn't to be too fancy, it's simply to um, get this piece locked into place. All right, the schematics and how we sort of hook up the uh, two servos and the temperature probe to the Arduino. I'm relatively new to the Arduino and, um, you know, I have definitely found sometimes schematics to be confusing. So I thought, let me just draw this out in layman's terms and hopefully that makes sense. Here's our mount, uh, servos mounted and I just marked them one and two. In the first servo, the first uh, uh, side here controls the off button, the second side controls the air conditioning, then on the second servo the first side controls the heat and this last guy doesn't do anything, there's no button there. So here is my layman's schematic. Servo 1, servos have three pins coming off of them, or three wires, excuse me. Um, they usually are yellow, red, and black. Not always, but usually. The black goes to ground, 
the red goes to plus five, and the yellow is your signal. So in this instance, I have servo one, the yellow cable here going to digital pin nine on the Arduino. The red pin goes to plus five on the Arduino, you're positive, and the black goes to ground. Servo two, similar thing, except the yellow uh, signal pin on servo two goes to digital pin 10. The red cable on the servo goes to plus five, and the black goes to ground. The temperature probe. Here's the temperature probe right there, that little guy. He's got three leads coming off of him. Very easy to hook up. The two outside pins go to ground, so that's nice because it doesn't matter which way it's forward. Either way, same way. The two outside pins go to ground. The middle pin, you need to use your breadboard to make two connections. One connection on the middle pin uses a 4K7 resistor. 4K7 means 4,700 resistor. That resistor color is yellow, purple, red. That goes from the middle pin to plus five. Then from the middle pin, you go also go straight to digital pin seven on the Arduino. So here's that shown on my breadboard. You've got the two outside pins going to ground. Here you can see the blue cable goes to ground, and here the yellow jumper goes to ground. Then the middle pin has two connections. The first connection for me happens to be this 4K7 resistor, which is connected to my first row of my breadboard, but then goes straight to plus five. I just did that because it was more convenient to run it that way with the uh, first jumper and then the resistor. And then you also go via this red cable, which wraps around, just trying to keep things tidy, straight to digital pin seven. Now let me show you the servos. The first servo I have number one. Here's the cable for it. Remember we've got yellow, red, and black. The yellow goes to digital pin nine via this purple jumper. And then, so that's going to stick right there. Oops. Which means that the middle connection, and I, I did some creative breadboarding here, the middle connection needs to go to plus five. So it goes for, to this yellow jumper over to here, which follows then to this yellow jumper, which goes back to this purple jumper, and that's my plus five. The third connection is the black cable. If you see that, it goes to this red jumper over to this row of the breadboard, which then follows the orange one to ground. Servo two hooks up to pin 10. So here I've got the servo one goes yellow, red, black. Servo two, I happen to flip around and it goes not the opposite way. So it goes black, red, yellow. Let me show you though first here. So the way this sets in is the first connection is black, which is my ground. If you remember, that shares the same ground as servo one. So here it's in this row of the breadboard. It just comes to this orange jumper and goes to ground. The middle one needs to be plus five. Well, sure enough, I'm sharing the same plus five on servo one, which is the yellow jumper, which goes back here to the purple to plus five. And then the third is my yellow signal cable, and that follows this red jumper all the way over here to digital pin 10. So if I plug that in, that is my servo connection, and that is the whole Arduino setup. Once again, you don't need to use a proto shield. You could use just a regular breadboard and the Arduino pins, which look exactly like this. Um, but that's all you need to do.